In this video, I'm going to talk about a few things I think you should know about analyzing big data in StatGraphics 18. As an example, I'm going to load into the StatGraphics 18 data sheet a sample data file with over 7 million records. It describes all commercial flights flown in the United States during the year 2008. If I scroll down near the bottom of that file, you'll see that there are over 7 million rows. I'm particularly interested in the relationship between two columns. One's called arrival delay and the second is called departure delay. You would expect that if a flight departed late it would probably arrive at its destination late. To model the relationship between those two columns, I'm going to go up to the Relate menu to One Factor Polynomial Regression. I'll ask it to fit a model where the Y variable is Arrival Delay and the X variable is Departure Delay. By default, it's going to fit a second order model, which works for me. As usual, I can pick various types of tables and graphs. For tables, I'll pick the analysis summary, the conditional sums of squares. For the graphs, I'll plot the fitted model and also residuals versus X. I'll now press OK. It'll read that data and fit the model. What you'll notice when we fit the model is that there were something on the order of 6.855 million observations used to fit this particular model. You'll see the standard output with estimated coefficients, standard errors t-tests, you'll see an analysis of variance, and you'll see a further analysis of variance for the variables, the first and second order terms, in the order fitted. On the right hand side you'll see a plot of the fitted model and also residuals plotted versus departure delays. As discussed in a different video, the XY scatter plots normally used to show the fitted model and the residuals have been replaced by hexagon plots because of the very large sample size. I want to take a closer look at some of the output because when you're working with big data some output is useful and some not so useful. One thing that is useful is the estimated model. Down at the bottom of the screen the stat advisor has plotted out the second order model which relates arrival delays to departure delays. That's still useful. Also useful is the R-squared statistic here showing that the model has explained about 86.75 percent of the variability in arrival delays. Things like the standard error of estimation, the mean absolute error, the Durbin-Watson statistic and so forth are all still useful with large data. What's not so useful with big data, however, are the p-values. What you'll notice is that the p-values will almost always equal zero. This is because of the very huge sample size. So that anything, any small effect, tends to look statistically significant. Here we have to be very careful of confusing statistical significance with practical significance. If you look here at the sums of squares, you'll see the sum of squares explained by the first order term in my model, the linear term. It's about 8.8e .8 to the ninth. Then you'll see the sum of squares explained by the quadratic term. It's on the order of 330 
thousand. Both appear to be statistically significant. However, the practical significance of that quadratic term is very small. If you'd like to see the plot of the fitted model, here it is. It's shown as a hexagon plot. Now that may be a quadratic model, technically, but for all practical purposes, it's a straight line. Another thing you need to be very careful of when you're working with big data are confidence limits. This plot shows not only the estimated curve relating arrival delays to departure delays, but also 95% confidence limits for the estimated value of y at various values of x. Those confidence limits are so tight you can't even see them. It looks, therefore, as if we know where the line relating arrival delay and departure delay is almost exactly. Well, we must not forget, however, when we have big data, is that those confidence limits depend on an awful lot of assumptions applied when we fit this model using least squares regression. First, and probably most important, is that we assumed that the relationship between arrival delay and departure delay was quadratic. That's a big assumption. If we pick the wrong model, then obviously the confidence limits are not correct. Secondly, we've assumed that all the observations are normally and independently distributed around the curve with constant variance. Clearly looking at the plot, that does not necessarily appear to be the case. It looks like there may be some skewness in the upper tail of the distribution. Also, it looks like there clearly could be some outliers. With big data, graphical methods are even more important than they are with small samples because we can't necessarily rely on statistical tests to tell us whether or not what we're doing makes sense in practice.